All right, so let's get started with Digo. Um, Digo is a fabulous um, online service for paperless research, for annotating, and for collaboration. So first things first, come into your Chrome Web Store and type in Digo Web, and then you will come and you will take the Digo Web app and come on down and you will also take the Digo Web Collector extension. After that, follow all the prompts for signing in and creating your account. So now let's look at how this can be used. Very first thing is you would have an online source that you want to share, that you want to annotate, collaborate, as I said. So the very first thing is you call up your source and then come over here to our little Digo icon and click it and save it. It's going to prompt you to do tags. You don't have to, but Doing a tag will help you when you want to um, search for different articles that you've saved or if you want to organize your library later. So I would name this King Leopold as that's part of my unit. Click Save. Now, when I click Save, you'll notice it brings up my annotation tools. I have a highlighter and I have a sticky note. So let's work with the highlighter tool first. Click on that, come over to your article, and you can highlight. As you see, it highlights in yellow as the default, but you can come right up to the top and you can click that and you can change to blue, green, or pink. So this is obviously very nice in organizing what it is you're highlighting um, and just giving you some options. We'll go ahead and make that pink. Now there's two ways that Digo allows you to use sticky notes. One way is using a sticky note to comment on something that you've highlighted. So come back over to what you've highlighted and hover on the little pencil and at the top click add a sticky note. This is directly tied to the highlighted portion. And we'll go ahead and click post and it adds a note and it puts a number. That's the number of comments that note has. The other way of using sticky notes is to come over here and just click add a sticky note. These are called floating notes. And you can, again, post. It'll tell you how many comments there are to that note. And you can actually then move this note around as well. So you can drag and drop, which is nice. Um, as I said, this is, I want to go to your library now so that you can see what you would see in your library. Come back to the Digo icon, come down to my library, and here's what you have. The first thing it lists is it gives you the article, and we can click directly on that, which we will in a few minutes to go back to the original source. It will, Digo will go ahead and it'll put all your floating notes first. Then it will, in order of the article, it will give you your highlights and any notes that you that were originally tied to that highlighted portion will be there right underneath. And as you see off to the left, it actually shows you the color highlighter that you used. Here is you can add more sticky notes or you can remove things. So that's kind of nice as well. So let's go ahead and click back on the article. The article comes up, but you notice that there aren't any annotations. So that's just, that's fine. Come back over to our Digo little icon, click annotate, and everything's right there. So, you know, that's obviously an, a nice option as well. I told you that this, one of the nice things about Digo was the ability to share and collaborate in real time. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to close my article out, go back to my library, and you'll see here under delete, preview, edit, you have share. Click on that, and you can now send this to anybody. So you could send it to your entire group, you could send it to your teacher, whoever it needs to go to. It gives you a place for a message, um, so you can tell um, your partner what you want them to do. and scroll down to the bottom, click send, and they will get it. So I'm gonna go ahead, I went ahead and sent it to my personal email, so we'll come over here and I will refresh so that I make sure that I get that. And sure enough, it's here, 
I click on it, and this is what your partner would see then when they click on what you've sent them. The very first thing Digo does is it lists the message from you or you know from your partner, and then here is that original article. Again, it will list all your floating notes first, then it will list your highlights, and it'll list what you've done on the highlights. So if you've paraphrased or if you've said, hey, I think this would be great for this paper or this section of the paper, they'll see that. They can also directly open that article and they're going to see all of your comments, highlights immediately. Um, your partner can respond. And you'll notice the number change because now there are two comments to that note. And they can respond here. And again, the number changes to two. So now let's go back over to your library. I'm going to close this out and close, go back to your library so you can see what you would look at after they've made their comments. And right away, it's already there. As I said, it is real time cloud based. So your partner can respond and they can respond here. Immediately, you have that. So then, We'll go ahead and let's open up that article again. And let's get the annotations back up the way we had it. So perhaps I wanna take my highlighter and I wanna highlight another section because now I'm ready to work some more. And you know I realize I wanna make this section green. I can do that. I can add more notes, do anything like that. One other really nice um, thing that Digo allows you to do is it allows you to screenshot something. Um, let's say you have a source that you only want somebody, you know, you only want to pay a certain amount of attention to one section or you, you want your partner to just pay attention to one section. You'll notice I went over here to my Digo icon and I, I grabbed screenshot. And now I have this little T-bar that it says click and drag to select. So I can grab just that piece. And before I save this, I can do some things. I can make some arrows. And again, it gives me some color choices. So maybe I want to call their attention to something. Um, I can also make a circle around. Or I could just, you know, hey, look at this. I, I just want you to focus on this. I can also add text. And I can make that text however big I want. Okay, when you're ready to save, just go to the save icon and just tell it to save it as a standalone item. Or I could have made it all in this, but I wanted it to just be this. And it'll prompt you to save it. Okay, so now let's close this and let's go back over to Digo and let's go to our library so that you see that. And now you have more notes. Again, um, you've got, I'm gonna go ahead and refresh this whole thing. And you'll see we've got down here, here's what we originally had and there's more annotations it's telling you. So now you see here's the second element that I highlighted and I did this one in green. And then here's my little piece that I just screenshotted. And I can edit, delete, I can just share that if I want. I can open up and it'll, you know, do I want the original size? Do I want to go straight to the article? Um, go to the original size here and there you go. So you can see that Digo, like I said, for doing paperless research, for collaboration, um, really is an indispensable tool and I hope this tutorial helps.